Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Power of the king. One word from him could put her man and every enemy of God's people down. But how was she going to secure his power to her favor? Because her man was the king's friend. And her man had been there before her arrival. Had she just walked to the king and said, I am your wife, destroy this man. She will follow Vashi too and be on her way out. Because the king, in all of the book of Esther, you see that the king was a noble man. He was a king indeed. Now watch what she does. She declares a fast and then she fasts herself because as in those days, if the king did not invite you into his inner chamber and you found yourself there, the penalty would be death or you will be banished completely from the kingdom. But because she had prayed, the Bible says she went to the king and he looks at her, lifts up the golden censer and says, come, what do I give you even up to half of my kingdom? That's what happens to men when they are under the influence of favor. Now watch this. The wisdom here is that the woman would have said half of your kingdom. Okay, I take half of the kingdom so that I have some power too. <laughs> but watch what she said. King, the reason why I am here is because I know you have a need. You want to see your glory known. I want to prepare a feast for you just to celebrate you. And I want in attendance, if you allow, this man called Haman. I also want him to be there. Notice how she approaches the king. And the king said, this is what I've been looking for. And he says, go ahead. He enjoyed the feast. And then he told her, do another one again. She kept doing the feast until she secured his trust. Then the Bible says a certain kind of feast called the feast of wines. And when they got to that feast, the king said, no, I, you can't be this kind to me. There has to be something bothering you. And she said, there's something I have to say. This man called Haman is plotting against my people but you see her benevolence and her lavish show of worship and love had trapped the king he couldn't fight against her and the bible says he went to the garden to reason out what he would do and her man came to beg her you see how god was against him and the king came out and saw the man near his wife and said on top of i'm even thinking of what to do with you and now I come out and I find you. I don't care whether you are apologizing or not. It gave him the boldness to pass that decree that where you wanted to hang Mordecai and destroy the Jews, that is the same place. Look, the book of Esther is an interesting book. No sword was used, but there was death. No fighting. It was praise, honor, and victory. Praise, honor, and victory that was a prophetic adumbration on how to approach the king when you want him to rise up as a mighty deliverer let the people praise thee O god it says then the earth shall yield her increase then in psalms 149 it says let the high praise of god be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to bind their kings with fetters of iron and to execute vengeance upon the nobles the bible says that when you that this is the heritage of the saints Do not just, let's not just share the grace and live tonight knowing that we attended a powerful service. God has given you a key. The wonder walking God is ever willing to arise concerning your life. But the key here is that you must know how to use the twin spiritual forces of prayer. We have done one with praise. Can you lend me five or ten more minutes because I want us to pray. Now that you have secured, you have worked in keeping with the protocol of approaching the king. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace. Is that in your Bible? Yes. That you can make petitions, you can present your requests with confidence. And he said, this is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, that we know that he hears us. What is his will? That all men be saved. So any prayer about salvation, you can be sure it is done. 
what is his will that no inhabitant in zion will say i am sick that means when you pray to rebuke sickness it is godly what is his will i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth is that true yes what is his will that your influence be established genesis 17 and verse 6 it says and i will make you exceeding fruitful is that true and that i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of you so influence is god's destiny for you what is his will that the path of the just is as a shining light shining ever brighter even to his perfect what is his will that god is able to make the barren woman to be a joyful mother of children what is his will as for me and my house we will serve the lord so anyone who is part of your house directly or by leadership you can bring them under that prayer cover i'm already giving you prayer points so that when it's time to pray you pray intelligently and with confidence knowing that once your prayer is within the circumference of the will of the father there is a guarantee that you are praying a prayer that will be answered what is his will that you excel the bible says and isaac began to prosper and he prospered and went forward he works great until he was very prosperous and the philistines envied him what is his will that he can cause men and grant them the power to prosper what is his will and i will restore the years that the canker worm so restoration is his will i'm showing you his will so that when you pray you pray intelligently what is his will that he can cause the nations you will call on one man and that a nation can answer you yes sir what is his will Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you blessed shall you be in the city blessed shall you be in the country blessed shall be your needing trough it's in the Bible what is his will that when men say there is a casting down for you you will say there is a lifting up yes sir now that you know his will it grants you the boldness to approach the throne of grace knowing that everyone that asketh receiveth are we together so for the next five or ten minutes if you need to find a prayer partner that's all right if you need to walk around that's all right the worship team will just charge the atmosphere while we pray pray in the spirit and make petitions the next 10 minutes is for crying your request don't keep quiet ye have not because he has not foundations of the fire and the believers that are here gathered and those following online please open your mouth and begin to pray over that health situation pray over that financial situation pray over your ministry over your business over the call of god upon your life over your marriage over your fruitfulness pray Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, doors opening, oh yes, oh yes, in the name of Jesus, higher levels, higher dimensions in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
We are still praying. Please look up. What do you expect when the mighty God shows up? Supernatural interventions. Do you know what it means to intervene? To intervene means to midwife, to come as a midwife between you and whatever trouble it is to create a permanent separation. When the wonder working power of God comes, what do you expect? Impartations of wisdom. Because there are many things in life that are wisdom dependent. James 1 5, it says, Does any man lack wisdom? James 1 5, it says, Let him ask, let him ask of God wisdom to run your company, wisdom to run your organization, wisdom to be a global influence, wisdom to lead your conglomerate. There are times that Sophia, natural wisdom may be insufficient. You need to outsource the wisdom that is from above. What do you expect when the mighty God shows up in your life? Boldness and courage. Because there are many times you know what to do, but the courage to take the step. He said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. In Acts chapter 4 from verse 29 to 31, they prayed for courage to be given to them. Grant with boldness that they may preach the gospel and that signs and wonders may be wrought in the name of your holy son the bible says and the building shook and they went and began to preach with boldness there are many of us please look at me we're praying there are many of us here what you are receiving tonight is boldness you have written the business plan for forever but the fear to step out what if i fail what if you succeed and to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage can i tell you there is no physical guarantee anywhere your guarantee is the word of god there are many times you have to step on the water and walk alone in this prayer many of you are going to kill fear permanently hallelujah apostle i want to do the phd but I'm, I'm afraid where will i get the scholarship from it's better to start and fail honorably than to remain in fear are we together now i'm telling you there are businesses that will emerge from tonight some of you okay i i applied for jobs last year i did not get anything master we have toiled all night he said nevertheless at thy word but they had to go back again go back again even jesus there was a time he touched the eyes of one who was blind and asked the person are you all right now he says well i've started seeing but i see men like trees he would have said it's an embarrassment to my anointing he had no time for regret he touched the eyes again for someone your prophetic word is do it again do it again pray again start again do it again do it again hallelujah the bible says adam knew his wife and she bare cain and abel in the course of time cain killed abel left the woman eve with a lot of grief and pain but i like the bible it says and adam knew his wife again and she bore seth it says and then men began to call upon the name of the lord again is a powerful word it means i've corrected my mistakes of yesterday again it's a powerful word it means i know better today than i knew yesterday i don't know who i'm speaking to maybe it's a ceo maybe someone who failed and failed woefully can i tell you again it's a powerful word rejoice not over me my enemies that even though i fall in the name of jesus i will yet rise again i will yet rise again open your mouth in the next one two minutes and begin to make prophetic declarations in the name of jesus christ mighty God you are arising for me arising for my children arising for my husband my wife arising for my corporation turning me into a global phenomenon someone open your mouth and pray 
you are doing this for your name's sake in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus what do you expect when the wonder working power of God comes to your life someone said divine direction first Samuel 30 and verse 8 you see please look up how many of you have tried to drive somewhere and then when you got to the regions of the place you know that the place is somewhere but I don't know exactly where the first thing you have to do is it will slow down your speed the moment there is confusion as to your direction your speed must be affected are we together then the second thing is that the margin of error will be wide because you you will knock somebody's gate you will say you are an robber. leave this place in the process you will be frustrated if you are not careful your car will hit someone are we together now direction is powerful because every time there is an absence of direction it affects your speed and I hope you know that destiny is a function of time whatever steals into your time has taken a portion of your destiny that is why there is speed and there is restoration these are systems of advantage that help us to gain time let's read first Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8 together I hope you are not tired we're wrapping up one to read David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Without fail, without fail, without fail, recover all. Without fail, recover all. Lord, should I go back to that same business or should I do another one? Lord, should I relocate to the U.S. or should I stay in Nigeria? Never assume direction. Listen, listen, listen. When the devil wants to destroy great destinies, huh? the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. It says, but the end thereof. That means you will be walking for a long time thinking you are right. Sometimes it's after 15 years you will know you were wasting your time. And how many of you know that if you plan to go to say, um, you plan to go to a particular location and you move opposite it, when you realize you will not disappear from there, you have to start from there. Is that true? Divine direction is one of the chief sponsors of delay. The absence of divine direction. Divine direction. Don't assume that everybody is doing the business you too, you will come and do. Mm -mm. And Isaac sowed in that land. It didn't make sense to sow in that land. You see, believers, we have an advantage of the voice of God. And no matter how long it will take, stay till you hear God but when you hear him run with the speed of Elijah hallelujah perhaps that will be the last prayer tonight and then I speak over our lives if you don't have a problem with direction look for someone connected to you who is desperately in need do you know one prophetic instruction that directs companies there are companies that have lost billions of dollars billions of naira not because of incompetence because of assumption not every open door is god's door even the prison has a door so just because a door is open you need to find out where you are entering a door can be open wonderful business opportunity and at the end you find out that billions have vanished with no explanation plunging people into depression and all kinds of health things he said when i sent thee lackest thou anything someone is going to pray for your church for your life father what is the next five years going to look like what is the next 10 years going to look like? Grant me direction so that I do not shadow box around my life. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Pray direction. Oh, let your voice come. Let me hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. It is risky to make assumptions. 
don't just relocate because others are going and don't just remain because they are talking about those going you must find out what is your blueprint for my destiny for now someone pray to your father you are a man of God pray for direction don't assume God wants you to start a ministry pray for direction hallelujah hallelujah true story I'm about to speak over your life I know a gentleman who God has so marvelously blessed marvelously fearfully blessed and what changed the life of that gentleman was one prophetic instruction one he was at a point in his life where everything was going down very brilliant smart gentleman but he didn't have any advantage around his life and this guy was tired and he cried and prayed and fasted was frustrated was humiliated and an instruction came a particular person in this nation and the Lord led him to just go and I think was it to greet the person so bless the person and just tell the person about what he does how he would even get to that person was an impossible thing and um, that person's security would throw you out from right from the entrance of the gate but he believed God and he took that step of faith and he did not even meet the man he met the man in an occasion an occasion he was not invited he just saw people and he decided to take a step of faith and then he knelt down and greeted the man who are you this and that do I know you I said no sir I came to do this and he looked at him brought this seed and he laughed at it held the seed and was what, what, what are you what do I do with this and then he told him an honestly true story he told him he said I'm very touched by your boldness and he told somebody there he said this gentleman see him tomorrow there's something I'm going to tell you the rest is history it was like day and night when this gentleman's life changed you know how you change from a, a dirty cloth to a clean cloth that's what happened it is not very difficult for God to lift people it's just that sometimes believers are careless the person promised me that by next week my life no man men do not fail because they are bad they fail because they are men are we together Lord should I pursue should I overtake and God can say for others they should go but for you stay back and you will stand there not making sense while you are there but it's in your standing God will bring the, your destiny helper and the person will say why are you standing here and you say because the king said I should stay he say oh I now see why the king told me to come your direction too listen the man who was tying the colt remember the colt that jesus rode on when the guy was tying it the bible says a colt that no man had ridden upon including the owner i'm sure god gave him an instruction this is your colt but you are preparing it for a nobler task how do you have a donkey that you don't ride upon and he tied it there when it was time for the triumphant entry i'm establishing your last prayer point Jesus tells them go to a place where the streets divide and you will see a code where no man including the owner had ridden upon he said lose it and if they ask you tell them the master in other words everybody who owns things is a steward when the master makes a demand they must lose it and let it come are we together now you are going to pray you are going to pray do you know what your prayer is going to be that wherever the helper of your destiny is in this season may God direct you and create a supernatural connection please open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and I declare someone is praying everyone who has been anointed by God mandated by the King to assist in my rising to assist in my shining to assist in my showing forth in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare supernatural direction the steps of a righteous man even if a righteous businessman 
even if he's a righteous career man a righteous man of God a righteous mother a righteous wife a righteous student the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord hallelujah hallelujah we're wrapping up personal testimony many years ago when I was just starting and I had seen visions of these days and even days to come and I wondered in my small mind then how God was going to achieve this coming from my background how would you do the things that you would do through my life mm. and then I remember one time at that time you know you know people worked with cassettes and CDs so when you preach and it was a, a major stream of income for ministries largely it was the media and then the Lord spoke to me I remember that a day will come people will listen to messages for free and will not even have to own a CD or a cassette I said how will this happen and he said here is what I want you to do this is the strategy that will announce you to the world that time he said you will not put your messages in cassettes and CDs like others are doing nothing is wrong with it he said take them as crude as they are and then you will put them online and my angel will take them to the nations now it makes sense today because of what we know and what technology has done it will be stupidity of the highest order both corporately and individually to have done that kind of thing number one you would be losing a major opportunity to be able to build income for the ministry number two <laughs> i mean concept of likes and shares and follows and that was not a that was a foreign concept but when he speaks today you see this god bar when he tells you to do something just do it all it may not make sense but just verify that he is the one for someone he can give you a message and say carry a seed and come and sow to the woman of God it doesn't make sense whatever he tells you to do do it for someone he can say lock yourself for one day in praise it does not make sense you just do it and you will be surprised that for five hours he will not speak until the last moment of your obedience that's when his word comes even after bathing six times Naaman did not change till his obedience was complete if he left angrily he would just leave somebody who was wet and dirty from the river hallelujah I can tell you I know that I, I hate to be the one to talk about it but you know look what the Lord did in the United Kingdom you see now those things listen listen when 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 I read that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth I believed it right from my small room I believed it when God speaks it is only us that think he's joking but he is not playing are we together it was not just an ambition that I got up and I said I want to do this no 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 many of you know our ministry we have never held a conference in the history of our ministry never not once and then the first conference would be in the United Kingdom you must be crazy but when he speaks I'm saying this because for someone you have derailed from the path of God and that has affected your hearing God when you started your spiritual vibrancy was the secret of your results but now a lot of things have come to be cloud you including the praises of men people can praise you to leave his presence people can praise you to leave the altar people can praise you to leave the things that keep the fire burning there's nothing wrong in celebrating you but we live in a world where people clap for you even when you enter the coffin they keep clapping when it closes they keep clapping when you are going down they keep clapping until you don't hear the sound again and you find out you've been buried After all the Lord did, I just went and rolled before him and said, Lord, your boy is here again. Just as before. That is finished. Let's face what is in front. That's it. 
I just decided to bring this. I usually don't talk about these kinds of things. I don't, it's not, it's not in me at all. But I just said this to encourage someone. Do not give up on God. God is prepared. You know how you lift a trophy. That's what God wants to do. Maybe for a family here, anytime we talk about things like this, you are even afraid because everybody knows the story around your life and family. It's as if all that is left there is shame and reproach. Let me bring you a word of hope. The Bible says there is hope for a tree. Even if it be cut off, foundations of sapphire. I may not know why God granted the grace to put this meeting this year, but even if you are Sarah, laughter is still coming. And that all day that hear about you will laugh with you. Do you believe that? Now, tomorrow we have a session, and I may not have the time I'm seeing there, we may not use all the time. Probably I'll just speak over your life and then tomorrow I know that some of you are here trusting God for healing, trusting God for all kinds of miracles. Um, we can leave that for tomorrow so that I pray over your life. Today I'm just going to speak over your life. We'll have the time. I want you, if allowed, to please invite everybody you can find. It's going to be a rain of blessings here. We're going to trust God that His mighty hand will rest on someone's destiny in the name of Jesus but tonight I want you to receive a blessing from the Lord the prophetic is very powerful it can reprogram possibilities in your life we have been commanded to bless yes to bless what does it mean to bless to program a climate of favor above you that compels everything under you to respond to the will of God that is what it means to bless Balaam said, I've been commanded to bless and I cannot curse. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. In your family, your children, your children, and your children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand Generation, your family, your children, 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 your in your children, your children, your children, your in our going, in our weeping and rejoicing, He is for you, He is for us, 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 Amen. In the name of Jesus shame and reproach that is upon any life here I stand in the name of Jesus upon the grace that backs up the RCCG in the name of Jesus the resurrected King shame and reproach be broken be broken be broken depart from every family here in the name of Jesus Christ shame and reproach leave now leave now leave now it works for others until it gets to your turn in the name of Jesus Christ failure at the edge of breakthrough I decree and declare be released from that demonic plague I release your children from that demonic plague. 
in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the same grace that came upon our father in the Lord that granted the grace to take the RCCG from that lowly estate to be global I stand in agreement may that same mantle rest upon your head and take you from where you are take you from your, where your company is and announce you to the whole globe in the name of Jesus Christ hear me it says I desire to come to you even I Paul once and again but Satan hindered us there are spirits that hinder things from reaching you let me clear them out of the way that in the name of Jesus every mountain every orchestration of witchcraft the ill speakings of men the scorching tongues of men that stands between you and the next level of prophecy I call upon the God of Jeshurun the one who rides upon the wings of the wind in the name of Jesus may that mountain be lifted from off you be lifted from before you be lifted be lifted from off you in the name of Jesus Christ listen Elisha was mentoring a group of prophets and they said where we meet with you is too straight let us go beyond the Jordan when they were felling the trees that they will use to construct the next place the Bible says one who borrowed an axe head it fell and he said alas master for it was borrowed anybody here in any kind of financial situation in the name of Jesus I call upon my God who is a restorer between now and the next three months I call upon the powers that created the heavens and the earth come out of that financial situation now come out out of that financial situation now by the God of heaven hallelujah final prayer for tonight I don't know what has covered your glory he said thou O Lord art a shield for me my glory and the lifter up of my head listen can I tell you the truth when your glory is covered even those who can honor you do not know you are there yes sir when a man is about to get married the bride is covered but she does not remain covered is that true there is something that they say you may now unveil the bride then sometimes they ask him is she the one how can he know when she's covered after all Leah was exchanged for Rachel darkness is dangerous because it can cover and can exchange destinies because of darkness just um, um, Jacob suffered seven more years in the name of Jesus every fail financial fail business fail spiritual fail ministerial fail that is covering you so that those sent to you to lift you to announce you cannot even see you we tear that veil tonight we tear that veil from off you we tear that veil from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ find visibility be seen and be known by those who need you in the name of Jesus Christ wonder walking God now hear me please no movement let me one more minute I want to make an altar call there are no assumptions in this kind of atmosphere please keep standing we're standing for just a minute or two and then we're done that wonder walking God the Bible tells us that he was humble enough to become a savior the savior and he left everything and became that savior walked upon the streets of Galilee taught ate, cried related with ordinary men and then the Bible tells us that ultimately his journey was to be an exchange to redeem men man who had been fallen to bring reconciliation for the Bible declares that there is no other name given unto men by which we must be saved 
an apostle's name cannot save you a pastor's name cannot save you in fact the name of a church or a religious organization cannot save you no matter what you receive from the king you are still outside of the kingdom except and unless you come to him here's what he told nicodemus in john chapter 3 when you begin from verse 3 he says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god then in verse 5 he says except a man be born of water and of the spirit that he cannot enter the kingdom of god that that which is flesh is flesh but that which is spirit is spirit in john chapter 3 and verse 16 still on that conversation he said for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever that blessing is for whosoever believeth on him should not perish it says but have life everlasting verse 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved i will never make assumptions when it has to do with knowing the Lord. John 17 and verse 3, it says, This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. If you do not know him, you do not have his life. Apostle, but I've been in church all my life, commendable, but notwithstanding. Apostle, I have a Christian name, commendable, but notwithstanding. I do not think I am a practitioner of anything that the Bible prohibits. Commendable, but notwithstanding. I want to make a call. Even if it's for one person who will be bold enough, two calls in one, actually. For one who is saying, Apostle, give me this chance here at this meeting hosted by the foundations of, of Sophia to make it right with Jesus. Number two, for someone you may be saying, well, I, I remember receiving Jesus, but sincerely because of the vicissitudes of life, the pressures of life, maybe friends, maybe wrong decisions, I'm in a position right now where I cannot say for sure that my relationship with the Lord is intact. He gives you an opportunity to make it right tonight. Like our father would do, I will count one to five. Wherever you are, I just need one person bold enough, unashamed enough to come and stand here. You have a choice to remain where you are, but Jesus calls you now. I begin my counting. One. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. Come, come. I need thee, oh, I need thee Every hour I need thee Come bless me now, my Savior If you're coming, please make way, come Just a minute more and then I lead you to pray, come Win that war finally come come to Jesus the Bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away